I tried to disable the chat for this. Um, I wanted to do a prepare recording, but it would not allow me to share my screen. Uh, I wrote out four pages worth of stuff to say about Rust is Dark, and just none of it fit. For the past nine days, I haven't known what to say, and I've really wanted to run... A video because I'm grieving but I'm in shock I'm grieving I'm mourning I'm in shock and I really wanted to say something and I haven't known what to say and nothing's gonna come out right but I'm gonna give it my best shot and I'm sure when I finish with this video I will um, find something else that to think of to say. I really wish <laughs> when I went to do something, my electronics obeyed my commands. Rust, there's no one else like you or that even could attempt to hold a camera like you. To hold a candle to you. You were genuine, honest, and sincere. You confided in me just like I confided in you, Russ. You were forthcoming, encouraging, heartfelt, transparent. Russ, I met you back in 2015 when I could not even speak. And now look at me. I won't shut up. Russ, you took my testimony and you never shunned me. You never backstabbed me, nor did you ever talk behind my back. You told the other people. You told the other survivors. It was safe to talk to me. And Russ, I have always cherished that about you, as you are aware. Thank you. Russ, as you know, I trusted you and the SIIU team, and that was it. Only you. Even in my autobiography, when I talk about the Freedom Deliverance Ministry and team, I didn't want to say your name because it was my autobiography, but you knew because I had told you you were in my book and I wrote about you, as well as many other ministries. But, Russ, I only ever trusted you and the SIIU team. Same with my program parts. Same with my tiers. And a tier is three altars at once. These things are huge for a survivor like me. And you had all of these characteristic traits, Russ. Where am I going to go now? Who am I going to go to now? You are my source for everything freedom, delivered, re freedom deliverance related. You never fooled me. You never lied. You always made time for me. <laughs> like when I had my first major breakthrough a couple months back, 
I'm able to read my Holy Bible. I'm able to read and listen to my Holy Bible even when I'm highly triggered and heavily targeted at the moment. It took me six and a half years of trying and working and plugging away to be able to have that breakthrough. I persevered for that time. I've only been awake for almost seven years. So that was a huge breakthrough. That was just a couple months ago. Remember, Russ, when I emailed you about it? <laughs> You'd hate Vav Hay and I call it Project Untrigger. I told you when I broadcasted about it, I broadcasted on the internet about it. I was so happy and so proud to tell you, Russ. You've seen me unable to talk. Five months after I initially woke up from MKUltra to now, current day, having made many accomplishments to help advance the kingdom of heaven in Yeshua's name, you see me now broadcasting and whistleblowing about child trafficking and satanic ritual abuse. I can talk now and I'm not going to shut up. I'm not going to stop whistleblowing. Who am I going to call to tell my successes to? Russ, who am I going to call when I fall down, Russ? When the MK Ultra is spinning, I'm heavily targeted, highly triggered. Russ, only you speak about and minister to super soldiers. There is no one else that I have. I was created and programmed in the dumps, deep underground military bases. Russ, you understood the severe extent of the trauma and torture they put me through. in these MKUltra and Super Soldier projects at the hands of Joseph Mangley. There is no one else suitable for me to talk to, and there is no one else as knowledgeable like you who is not shy, not scared to talk about Super Soldiers, not embarrassed to know them and help them to deprogram, but most paramount, Russ, you knew what you were talking about. Except that I come from the dumps. Thank you for the formal education, Russ, to coincide with my personal experiences. Thank you for going out of your way and not forgetting about us survivors. And being a number one advocate for us survivors, Russ. You always made sure we were going. You always made sure that myself and the other survivors knew that going forward, we are not the problem. We were not the problem. And we are not the problem. us to have you be a direct part of my deprogramming, healing, and recovery process was a huge honor and privilege to me. Russ, to 
be trained directly by you and with you, as well as from your videos, it was also all my honor and privilege. I remember back in the day, 2015 was it, every Tuesday night, or every other Tuesday night, Russ, you would go live online with a chat room, give us the training sessions, and then answer all of our questions. Those were the good old days. You literally trained me directly. And then your website, ShatterTheDarkness.net, with all your videos to also have. I got more training and knowledge and education from your videos than if I would have attended a four-year college or seven-year college. With what I've learned in spiritual warfare, deprogramming, all sorts of things. <clears throat> I'm not done. Two more things. This is my baptism when Russ baptized me. I had a dream. I had a dream about it. I'm going to get to this. But first, um, before I get to how I met Russ and um, a little bit of what it was like for me as a survivor and Russ as my Freedom Deliverance pastor who had a direct hand for since I met him since 2015 until now, six years and I've been awake for seven years. I'll get to that, but first, my friend, a fellow survivor and brother in Christ, Jason Christopher, um, very wise soul, he put up a post uh, about a week and a half ago, and I want to read a couple lines of it, so dot, 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 dot. <clears throat> But regardless of the enemy's plans, our authority in Yeshua is absolute. And we must stand on this and not only war against them, but fight harder than we ha ever have before. I don't know if I am worthy, but I am asking you, Tevave, for a double portion of the anointing he gave to us so that we may be even more effective in this war. Heavenly Abba, just as Elijah was giving, uh, given a double portion of Elijah's anointing, please bless us, those who have been directly trained by our mentor, Rustis, or please give us, if, if it be in your will, a double portion of the anointing that was upon Rustis, or may it be upon us too, in Yeshua's name. Holy Spirit, please help me pray for that. I don't think I said it correctly. I know I want it to be. I know I want that anointing to be upon me. I always said if I could carry Russ Dizdar's briefcases to the crime scenes he investigates and to the FBI and to the police that he teaches, I would do it for free because that's the field I want to be in is exactly what he does.
So how did I meet Rust is Dar? <laughs> go through it um okay. there we go forgive me um okay where am I um how did I meet Russ the very first time I read Russ well Hang on a second. Um, wait a minute. Can I take a second to blow my nose and come, like, I just need a moment. <laughs> Excuse me. God from the Old and New Testament of the Bible. He led me to rest from my dreams into reality. So Heavenly Abba allowed me and gave me dreams in Yeshua's name. I followed those dreams into reality and then I met Rust Dizdar. So I had dreams about Rust Dizdar back in 2013. Um, I had the reoccurring dream again, um, so to speak, in 2014, and then I drew a picture of it, um, around December 2014, January 2015, and this was the picture of it. In the dream, um, I was with a group of people walking through the woods, and um, we came upon, see these are trees, and then here's boulders on the left hand side of the page at the bottom, and then as you can see there's an opening to the cave, cave and a path or walkway so to speak inside the cave, and there's running waters. And on the inside of the cave, you can see, like, there's torches, there's lights on the wall, so to speak. And at the top, there's these three weird-looking things. Those are three demonic principalities or powers um, that were fleeing out of the cave. At the bottom of the drawing, you see four people. One of them is me. Well, those three people are Russ Dizdar, Doug Hemp, L.A. Marzulli. So I drew this picture December 2014, January 2015, and I remember this dream so vividly. Well, Yudhe Bafe led me to Rust Dizdar on the internet and I began listening to his videos. I underwent a freedom deliverance in March 2015. Well, then I heard of Russ Dizdar doing a conference in Bud Lake at Mountaintop Church, my home. <laughs> and, uh, well, at the time I was not going to church whatsoever. Okay, Mountaintop Church became my home after this conference. But I heard L.A. Marzulli, Russ Dizdar, and Doug Hemp were doing a conference. And because Russ Dizdar spoke about super soldiers and had the book The Black Awakening, and also to L.A. Marzulli. L.A. Marzulli spoke about 
super soldiers briefly on his trail hunting the Nephilim. Nephilim. Nephilim is the plural of Nephilim, which is the giants, the offspring of fallen angels who mated with human women in Genesis 6. Anyway, Douglas Hemp uh, um, is someone that stands against false doctrine. I have seen him repent for uh, entertaining the rapture theory, and he has stood up and stood against it. Repented for even getting hooked into it, but uh, I admire Doug Hemp a lot. Anyway, uh, April 2015, Rust Dar came along and did a conference. Oh, I gotta tell you, let me rewind. So it wasn't just the dream of this cave. There was more to it. So I told you about the drawing itself. Well, in the dream, I was trucking along, <laughs> hiking along in the woods with a group of people, and, and we came along this cave, and um, three people stood out, and they said, Holly, come with us inside the cave. Um, so I followed them, and we went in, and the cave was really dark, but it had these torches. It looked like torches on the walls to light it up. And I remember the stones. Everywhere there was just these stones, and this place was made of stones. Um, and in the way, way back of the cave, there was a river f running through it, flowing through it. So I had entered into the cave with these three people, and they said, Holly, go farther back in the cave, um, but we're going to wait here for you. So I went back farther in the dream, um, I had listened to their instruction. I went farther back in the cave, and as I was in the back of the cave, I saw these three bad demonic spirits flee and fly out of the cave like something was chasing after them and scaring them instead of them scaring me. Seriously. And um, to explain it precisely, um, in the dream, I saw an angel. Um, this angel I had seen before, um, but this angel in the dream said, Holly, when you see the X marks the spot, stop running. Um, and the angel had, well, actually the angel didn't say anything. I saw an angel in the dream and what he did was he pointed and when he pointed, there was an X and a spot. And, well, yeah, he kind of was insinuating that when I see that, stop running. Just stop running. And then I remember um, when I began exiting this cave to walk back to the entrance, back to the three people, I wasn't scared like typically I am. Okay. Oops. Because, you know, bad dreams, three bad spirits flying around. <laughs> but I wasn't scared. And these were pretty bad uh, demonic spirits. They looked like complete dragons, to tell you the truth. They were fierce. But anyway, in the dream, I walked back to the entrance, and I rejoined the three people. And um, that was the extent of it. <clears throat> so anyway... Um, Ude Vave ended up leading me to Rust is Dark, and uh, I stuck by his videos 25 hours a day, 8 days a week. I underwent a freedom deliverance and in March 2015, and then when I heard Rust is Dark was doing a conference out by me, I put my bells on and I ran. And when I saw him April 2015, it was a week-long conference, my attorney came with me. Um, April 2015 was five months after I initially woke up. April, wait, January, February, March, April, actually four months, my bad, four months after I woke up from MK Ultra programming. When I woke up from MK Ultra programming and realized that I was used in super soldier projects in deep underground military bases and Rustis and uh, Joseph Mangley was the first programmer I remember. Um, I fell to pieces. When I found out I was being, I was 
uh, that created me as an uberman, Hitler back breeding to the Aryan races when I realized I was a part of that experiment. I fell to pieces, literally, I couldn't speak. So April 2015, my attorney came with me and my attorney spoke to Russ Dizdar, L.A. Marzulli, the SIIU team, Doug Hemp, and everybody else that I came into contact with because I, I really had trouble talking and I was really embarrassed and really nervous, which just made the situation worse. So when I got, when my attorney and I got to the conference, in Mountaintop Church in New Jersey. Um, well, let me show you the pictures of that. The church itself looks like a cave. It's dimly lit. Look at the dark red lights. Let's refer back to my drawing. Look at the red that I have on the walkway and whatnot of the drawing of my picture. Look at the lights on the drawing of my picture as well. They look like torches. Let's go back. So here's where the conference was held with Russ Dizdar. <laughs> Look at all the stones. Look at the dark lights. Look at the wall. Look at the light fixtures on the wall. They look like torches that would go inside a cave, right? That's what I thought. Now, look at the piano, my favorite instrument. And I used to have a piano that I was separated from my possessions. There's an X marks a spot on the piano. Now I was skirting through the church trying not to be noticed, but I wanted to capture a picture of that because that's like a one in a million shot. The sun was shining through the skylight and it made an X marks the spot, which is the same X marks the spot that the angel in the dream pointed at. And he said, when I see X marks the spot, stop running. You're home, Holly. You're home. You're safe. Again, this is a picture of Mountaintop Church, my home, my physical church, but they're closed down due to COVID, so I don't much support them like I used to, no offense. But as you can tell, it's a lot of dark, dim lights and a lot, a lot of stones. It looks like a cave. It's a beautiful church. And because I was skirting around the church to grab that picture of the X marks the spot, I did try to grab a picture of everybody at the stage, but I was shaking. If there was, a, if this was a clear picture, you'd be able to see Russ Dizdar, Douglas Hemp, L.A. Marzulli, and in front of them, uh, my pastor, Matt Jones, and then all the way off to the right, John Ben John. <clears throat> okay, so. The thing that um, gets me, okay, so I met Russ Dizdar April 2015. He gave me his book, The Black Awakening. <laughs> right, which I showed you. Um, I went out to lunch with a survivor the SIIU team, and then I spoke with Russ Dizdar for a while. At first, they thought there was something wrong with me, but then, with my attorney there, <laughs> um, at least they gave me a shot to talk to them. But I gave them my testimony, and now, remember, I could barely even speak. That's why they thought there was something mentally or physically wrong with me. Um, April 15, this is what, April 2015, what got me is, um, the flash photos, the flash photos got me, because of the X marks the spot, and, um, I had asked for, uh, Heavenly, well, I told Heavenly Abba a few things, but, uh, 11 months before this event, um, I had made my covenant to Heavenly Abba, and I had uh, my first set of flash photos, and his seal came upon my forehead. So for me to go to this event with Russ Dizdar in the year 2015, 11 months after I got the seal on my forehead, and it was the 11th picture on the roll that had the seal on my forehead, then 11 months after that, 
was April 2015 where I get the second set of flash photos. It was confirmation for me that I in fact had Heavenly Abba. So here are those April 2014. I'm sorry, May 2014. I gave my covenant to Heavenly Abba and he gave me 12 flash photos. I had 13 selfies. 12 of them had flashes on my forehead. On the 11th photo on the roll came the cross on my forehead. Right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and there's my seal. The twelfth one is a clear photo, no flashes. The thirteenth photo has the twelfth flash. So, uh, the eleventh photo on the roll had the seal, you gave off a seal upon my forehead. Well, eleven months after that, I came to this conference purposefully seeking out Rust to start because he wrote the book about super soldiers. The Black Awakening. Well, I got the X marks the spot flash photo. And since this time, I have not had any more flash photos. I don't know how else you word it or, or how else you say it. Um, so this was really significant to me because to me, Heavenly Abba was directly leading me to Rastasdar. Because of this. Because he spoke about super soldiers. Um, and they talked about deep underground military bases. So I stuck with it. I stuck with it. I stuck listening to Rusty's Dar. And then I had a dream. Well, actually, first Rusty's Dar said that uh, he was... Well, as time went on. So the conference, the conference ended, right? And I stuck with Yeshua HaMashiach, but I also kept listening to Rust Isdor's videos. And as time went on, September 2015, Rust Isdor was going out to Allentown. So I made hotel reservations to stay out there, and I had a dream. In the dream, me and five people and three cars drove down a road. We pulled to the side of the road. We got out and all of us walked to, to um, it looked like a pond in a field. So I'm sorry, there were five people and me in the dream and three cars and we walked out to what looked like a pond in a field. And, uh, that was pretty much about it for the dream, <laughs> to be honest with you. Um, here's Rusty's Dar and I. That is September 26th of 2015, the night before the super last blood red moon of the tetrad which is very significant i wanted to be baptized last watchman in i even told russ Tisdor that <laughs> so there's a picture with him september 2015 and um it was great when he was at allentown at this cafe because i had two days where i was sitting at that table that you see behind us i sat at that table for two days next to him talking with him back and forth listening to other people's testimonies, getting his thoughts on things, and it was great. It was great. Um, and then all of a sudden, Russ said, hey, um, or no, actually, I think what happened was I asked him about baptisms, um, and he's like, yep, we're going to do them. But then when it came time to get the baptism, here's the kicker, though. When it came time to get the baptism, Russ goes, Holly, leave your car here. 
we got to kind of come back this way anyway for our hotel. But leave your car here. We'll take you to your to the to get back to to get baptized. <laughs> I was like, score! I kid you not. So I get into Russ's vehicle from the cafe in Allentown, and it's him and I forget. I think Rick in the front and me in the back, and Russ is driving me to my own baptism. And here he is, the man talking about super soldiers, gonna baptize me. So, um, if you, uh, I don't know if you've ever met Russ, but he is just great. Him in person, his presence just fills the room. He's big, robust, his chuckles, like, you, when he chuckles, you felt it, and uh, he just made you feel empowered in the Lord, in Yeshua, and um, he, he made me, the survivor, feel like I could rise above all of that ugly stuff from the dumbs and have for myself a calling and worth and value put on my life just the same way I looked at him having it upon his life. So what I saw and perceived Russ, the relationship he had with Heavenly Abba, I wanted that for myself, but also Russ made me feel like I could have it, but he encouraged me to have that relationship. And uh, he encouraged me to keep seeking the Lord. And... Um, Russ had a certain way about him when it came to survivors. I can't quite word myself. But there's no one like Russ. The way he handled every situation, the way he handled me as a survivor. Um, I'm going to show you my baptism. I can figure out how to work everything on my side. You guys have seen this a million times, but what's one million and one at this point? Okay, so I used to be, I still am, I guess, <laughs> a martial artist. So I was giving a formal full bow to Yudhe Vavhe before I got baptized. So just that's what you see me doing was giving a formal full bow to Yudhe Vavhe. <laughs> well, also, you know, Russ Dizdar was doing the honors of my baptism. <laughs> okay, see how warm it is? Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> All right, man. Come right here. I have shorts underneath. So. That's fine. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I do too. <laughs> All right. Here's what we're going to do. Remember this? Just so you make sure. It'll take yep. a few moments. I'm going to wait for the rest of them to come in. Everybody can come in. Let me go back. Let me move you up just a couple seconds. Hun, don't go in front of me. Go ahead. Okay. Everybody ready? We are. Hallelujah. Father, we just thank you again. We ask you just to bless everyone being baptized. God, with your blessing, your joy, the joy of salvation. Thank you for the forgiveness, the new life, the empowerment, the eternal life. Jesus, for you being in lives, we, we, we bless you right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Thank you. In obedience to the command of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, I baptize you, my sister Holly, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name, Yeshua's name, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Uh, Jesus name. Yeah, that. Uh, okay. Um, where am I? Where am I? Okay. Um. Here we go. Um, so.
So that's all my. Awesome. Okay. Sorry, that's all my. All right. Um. So April 2015 when I first met Rusta Star. Uh, September 2015, when he baptized me to Yeshua HaMashiach. Um, this is, wait, I want to pull up the other one first. This is Hear the Watchmen in Long Island, New York. I think it was June of 2019. Brooke Federline was there. Um, I believe this was the first time Brooke Federline got to meet Russ. I'm not quite sure. But uh, it was Brooke Federline, Dr. B, and myself at this Hear the Watchmen conference. It was a spiritual workshop. So it was a workshop. And uh, boy, I wish we could go back there and do it all over again. I still save the room key from this conference. This is the International Satanic Ritual Abuse Conference in Newark, Ohio, October 2019. Wilford Wong, oh, sorry. Wilford Wong and Gregory Reed were uh, featured and highlighted at this conference. Um, I'm an adult survivor of Pizzagate, child trafficking. Um, I'm adult. I'm an adult survivor of satanic ritual abuse. MK Ultra. Man, Russ just lit up a room when he came into it. And you wanted to hear everything that Russ had to say, too. You, you didn't want to miss anything because everything he said was just so valuable. This is the last time I saw Russ Dizdar. April 2021. I didn't get to sit down and talk to him. And I had gotten an email and a message because it's always hard. it was always hard to get through to Russ. But uh, for me... You know, I, Russ and I, I only needed to check in with him two, hopefully three times a year, but I was good with his videos. I didn't need constant maintenance. I can do it on my own. But um, twice, two, three times a year, I was always trying to check in with him in person so he could see my face, I could see his face, and we could talk. Um, at the Expelling the Darkness conference, I don't... Uh, I forget where in Ohio it was, but um, it was April 2021 this year. He became really ill and was rushed to the hospital. I had spoken to him right when he went up here, and um, I remember asking him if we could get, if I could get, if we could get Stephanie ordained. I remember telling him, I said, Russ, uh, Guess what, guess what, guess what? I broadcast from FringeRadioNetwork.com now. I'm um, finally turning around and doing something productive um, and helpful. <laughs> and uh, I want you to come on and be my guest. And um, But I know you're about to speak, so let me let you go and I'll talk to you after. And um, he was really sick. He said, Holly, I almost didn't recognize you when I walked in. Out of nowhere, I just, I feel ill. And uh, I was trying not to glom on to him because, you know, anywhere Russ was in a conference, there was always a line of people waiting to speak to him. Russ was the one speaker that was up at all hours of the night, still down in the conference room. Um, speaking to people because they came a very long way to see him and purposefully to speak to him. And Russ was always gracious and 
generous to always sit there and speak to every single person and he gave every single person respect but he also did not take you know any guff or any nonsense like that so he was my mentor I looked up to him the way he did things Um, I, I didn't, I didn't get to see him. I didn't get to really sit down and talk to him. <laughs> he used to broadcast from FringeRadioNetwork.com. Russ used to broadcast from FringeRadioNetwork.com. Same with L.A. Marzulli. But uh, now I'm broadcasting from FriendsRadioNetwork.com, and I better hop to it and start um, putting my nose to the grind and stepping up to the plate because I want uh, that double portion of anointing from Russ the same way Alicia got it from Elijah. And I pray that everyone that was trained by Russ directly and that Russ was a mentor to, I hope, I pray, Heavenly Abba blesses you with your prayers in Yeshua's name. Um, I'm not really ready to say goodbye to Russ. Um, um, there's nobody, there, there's just, uh, this is just such a huge loss. And I've never had a mentor before. And how did I meet Rusta Star? Well, Yud Hei Bav Hei showed me in a dream. And uh, I followed that dream into reality. And then I met Russ. Um, God led me to him. Um, <clears throat> well, um, My prayers for Shelly and Charity and their grandbaby and the rest of their family and friends. Um, Russ, I, I hope I did not shine a bad light on you by giving my testimony. Um, thank you what you did for everyone. Um, thank you what you especially did for me as an ex-super soldier. Um, thank you for being my mentor. Thank you for being my friend. Thank you for confiding in me when I needed you to. Thank you for helping me to avoid those potholes I definitely did not want to fall into. Thank you for making me feel like I matter. And, uh,
you're going to be sorely missed, Russ. And there is no replacing you. I love you very much, Russ. Thank you to everyone. Thank you for your time. And um, I just, I'm really awkward right now. I don't know what to say.